Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this video is, uh, I'm going to give you a guided tour of the landing gear on this Boeing 737. The particular aircraft I'll be using will be a 737-400, uh, so it's from the Classics generation, but the differences are only minor between Classics and NGs. Apologise in advance, there's a little bit of wind noise at times on this video. Uh, I do hope that doesn't detract from uh, your, your enjoyment of it. As always, please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And today we're showing you around the landing gear components, courtesy of Cranfield University and their Boeing 737-400. Okay, so let's start at the, the back of the main landing gear, the right hand main landing gear. And we can see the, uh, the tyres here, which are in, uh, in reasonable condition, I'd say. And the tyres in, inside the wheels, we've got the, the, the brake disc units. They're located here, they're steel on the, on the 737 Classics. Some of the, uh, the NGs and all of the Maxes are carbon brakes, but these are steel. For you as the pilot on your walk around, the things you're checking for, the general condition of the tyres, looking for no deep cuts, no, um, uh, no sign of any canvas coming through. I say these tyres are, are in quite good condition. As regards the, the brakes though, what you can check for are the brake wear on the brake wear pins here. So there's one here, another one on the other side, and there are two more on the, uh, on the front of the, the brake drums as well. These, when they become flush, that's when they need to be brought to the attention of an engineer for changing. Uh, I'm told that by law, when they're flush, you've still got enough for a full rejected takeoff, should you want to do so. The construction of the, of the, 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 the main landing gear, what you've got is an, a large outer cylinder here. This is the shock strut. This is the main landing gear. silver colour part there and this inner cylinder is free to move in and out of the outer cylinder like so. It's also free to rotate as well and when we go around to the, the front of the gear we'll, we'll see how this is all held in place. The axle runs across so you've got the brake units and then the wheels on top. Okay so let's go around to the, the, the front. So there's a little bit more going on on the front. Um, the first thing is that in front of the shock strut is uh, the drag strut here, and there are several cables coming down this. Um, so we've got two cables here, which are the, the hydraulics for the, the brakes. We've got another one, which is coming to the, um, the shimmy damper. This one is holding the cables for the transducers. This goes around and wraps at the back and enters the axle at the back. And this is uh, to sense the wheel speed for anti-skid and the like. And then the final one is this one here, which is only on the right main landing gear. And this is your, your air ground swat, squat switch. Uh, the, th this is just a, a Teleflex cable and it will compress or extend as the gear uh, comes weight off wheels here, runs up and the actual sensor switch is in the, in the wheel well. So anyway, the, the main difference between the front and the back is this torsion link here, uh, or scissor link as it's sometimes known. So you've got an, an upper and a lower part to that. The lower part is attached to the axle, the upper part is attached to the outer cylinder. So these basically keep the, the, the axle and the, and the wheels attached to the aircraft. Um, also, it it's reduces the amount of, of clockwise, anti-clockwise, torsional motion that the, that the wheels can have. It, it still allows for a little bit of motion, um, and, and that's what we, we know as shimmy, but that's, that's reduced with this, uh, with this shimmy damper here. Uh, what else can we show you? The, the, the brake wear pins, often overlooked on a walk around. Most people just tend to look at the back ones, but you've got one there and you've got one, same place on the other side there. So you can see these brakes are in actually quite good condition. 
All right, so moving up from the uh, from the sizzling, uh, let's look at the doors. Um, now the, line, the the 737 is is fairly unique in most airliners in that it hasn't got doors that cover the wheels. Um, hence the the cutout shape here. This actually fits around the wheel like so, um, and that's the reason why we got these uh, aerodynamic hub hub caps because. The face of this is actually exposed to the air in flight. So the, the rest of the doors we've got, they're in three parts, we've got the outer door, the, uh, the mid door and the inner door. So uh, sorry, the, this, this is the outer, the mid and the inner. Um, the outer door you can see it's hinged at the top and this simply folds in like so coming to around about here. Uh, there's a little control rod up at the top which which pulls that door in. The middle door is the most simple of the lot. It's simply uh, bracketed in place. It's, it's fixed to the drag strut. So as the drag strut moves up and retracts, it brings this door with it. The complicated one is the, uh, the inner door. And the control rod for that is here. So as the side strut collapses and the gear goes in so these levers bring and fold the uh, the inner door and that folds to a position here just extending this this arc around here that's where that one fits okay enough about the doors let's have a look at the uh, the, the retraction and extension mechanism now so as we say we got the the main weight of the aircraft is taken on the shock strut the drag strut as well. This here is the side strut and this is uh, really the, the, the part that holds the gear down. You've got, you notice it's hinged in the center. So when the gear retracts, this, this hinge breaks and folds that way into the wheel well. Holding this in place is this, which is a down lock strut. And that locks this side strut in place. You can see that because this aircraft's uh, on, on static display at the moment, the, the, the gear pin is in, so that's holding the, the gear in. If you ever see that on a walk around, you need to take that out. It's been done before, very embarrassing. Um, this is an over center hinge, and it is held in place. There's a pivot at the top by these two large springs here. So these springs are pulling that way, which is holding this lock this way into the over center position, which is keeping this, this down lock straight, which is keeping this in place, which is keeping the gear extended. There is a micro switch on here, a sensor. That's where you, your gear down lock sensor is. Uh, we've got the two, two wires coming for that there. Um, and that's what gives you the green lights in the flight deck. Regardless of any other indications, if you've got three green lights, your gear is down and locked. And that's where it's, it's, it's getting that pickup from. Okay, so the, for, for retraction, there's a, a piston just up at the top between these two, two springs. The piston overcomes the, the, the force of the springs to push the, the mechanism that way at the top which moves this in and that allows the the strut to fold okay for up locking i just want to show you this roller here there we go and that comes up when the gear retracts and it fits into place in that hook there so that hook holds that roller in place and that is the the up lock hook Again, we've got a, a, a system of an, uh, an over center lever which is held in place by these springs and it's broken by a, uh, by a piston on the back. Again, there's a, there's a micro switch sensor which I think is there, uh, which tells, tells the, the, the aircraft system that, that the gear is up and locked. Okay, we're now going to go on to nose gear components. And this video was taken from a walk around tour I did of the aircraft. 
Into the nose gear, uh, the nose gear doors, you see that they're reasonably firm. A couple of bonding wires on, on each one, make sure they're in place. If not, uh, worst case scenario is that uh, a lightning strike could weld your, your nose gear doors closed and that would make it a problem for, for gear extension. General view of the, of the nose gear, uh, so we've got the, the tyres, turn attachment point, taxi light, Worth a check of these, especially if it's been a bit bumpy on the on the pushback. Um, you never know, a tow bar might have just hit it and you might have lost the taxi light. I've seen that a number of times. Um, we've got the, uh, the nose wheel steering sur summation unit here uh, with the cable inputs to it. These are the actual steering actuator uh, cylinders. And over there we've got the nose wheel steering bypass pin. So the ground crew will put this pin in here to disable your steering in the flight deck so that they can steer the, the nose gear with the, with the pushback tug. So we check that's obviously in place and that's the pin that you want to see removed before flight. One pin that you shouldn't see on a walk around is this one here. And this pin is the, the gear down lock pin. Uh, now this aircraft's a static aircraft, it's, uh, it, it's on, on permanent uh, display here at Cranfield University. Um, so that, that's why this is in place. But this is the, 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 the hinge that folds to allow retraction of the, of the nose gear. So if this one's in place, you can't go flying. Unless of course it's a gear down ferry. These bars here are just actuator bars to, to control rods to, uh, to close the nose gear door. And one point of interest you may like to see, just up here you see these two, these are the snubbers, the nose, nose gear snubbers. They stop the wheels from rotating, there's no brakes on the nose gear, it's all done on those snubbers up there. Okay, let's move around. Okay, that's it for landing gear, I hope that's been of use. My thanks again to Cranfield University for letting me uh, look around the 737-400. And as ever, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.